Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Business Intelligence Tip of the Week. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create a report uh, based on a stored procedure in SQL Server Reporting Services. Um, this is a tool that I use, I'll say, most of the time when I'm creating uh, reports out there. Um, tips that I've showed you in the past have connected to what are called tables and views, and we've got into defining what those things mean as far as uh, what a table is versus a view and so forth. Today, we're going to be unveiling kind of a new topic. Those of you that aren't database people may have heard the term stored procedure, but aren't real sure uh, what those entail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here to SQL Management Studio again and touch on stored procedures. Stored procedures are really nothing more than uh, processes that have been saved. So a view is like a saved query that you give it a name. So it might be like my employee data where you've selected data from, from an employee uh, table or something like that. Um, a stored procedure is when you want to do something a little more complex, maybe query, query something and store that off in a table and query something else and store that in the table and uh, process some data, do a number of steps and then put it together. And then the very last part of the process is select data that's from that consolidated bunch of information. So whenever you need to do something a little more complex than a simple single select, a stored procedure is what you'll use. And then you give that a name. So just like the name implies, you're storing off a, a procedure or a process that you're following. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a procedure completely from scratch. So you see how it works from start to finish. Um, so I'm just going to go into a sample database that I have. Now, in, in SQL Server Management Studio, how you would create a stored procedure is you'd go to the database. You can go to Programmability uh, section and go to Stored Procedures. And I'm just going to say a new stored procedure. And what that'll do, and this is a little big, so I'm going to kind of shrink this down a little bit. Um, oops, not that. We're going to do, oops. Well, we're not going to shrink it down. We're going to with, go with it the way it is. So... Um, what we're going to do in here is um, expand on our text and give it a name. So it, it does a, a template for you when you say new. So in this procedure, I'm going to give it a name like STP. I always started out with a prefix of STP for stored procedure. Uh, the Microsoft delivered system procedures all start with SP. And I was told at one time that if you name your procedure SP, which is I see quite often as a prefix, it actually slows it down slightly because it gets confused and it has to look through the system procedures first. I don't know if that's true. I've not done any testing on it. But to this day, I still prefix mine with STP underscore instead of SP. So just a little uh, item there. And then anytime I'm doing a procedure that I'm doing it for the case of a report, I also add in RPT there so that I know it's a stored procedure for a report. So in this case, I'm going to do a stored procedure for report, and maybe I'll just call this account unit list. Those of you that are in for uh, slash Lawson folks will recognize an account unit is like a cost center. So I'm just going to do a, this procedure is a listing of cost centers. And so I'm going to say create procedure, give it a name, and then um, anytime you want to pass an argument to it, and this is one of the reasons why people use stored procedures is you can pass parameters to those. You give it a name that starts with an at sign. So I'll create one called company and I can say company and then give it a data type of an integer. So this procedure is going to be called STP RPT account unit list, and it's going to accept one argument for company. Then it gets down into the code down here that you want to execute. Now, what I'm going to do is just replace this procedure or this statement that they put in here as a template and just say select star from uh, account unit structure. That's our table that we have some account unit information in. And I'll say where company equals and say at company. So my procedure is going to do nothing more than select data from account unit structure where company is company. Now, you wouldn't necessarily create a procedure to do this because you can do this exact same thing just querying this table. But what you would do is you would just have all of your other uh, processes in here, whether you're updating tables or putting things into a temporary table or doing anything that way. 
Um, and then the key thing, because it's for a report, is just make sure the very last statement of your procedure is selecting data from whatever. So it's your result set or your record set that you're trying to do. So in my case, it's just going to select data from the account unit structure. So then I, what I do is I execute up here and that says command completed successfully. So what that did was that stored that procedure, STP RPT account unit list into this database as a name procedure. So if I go out here under stored procedures and I say refresh and I look in underneath there, if I go down, I got a lot of them in here, but if I go down under STP RPT, you'll see my account unit list. Now, if I were gonna run this inside SQL Server, if I right click and say execute, first thing it's gonna do is ask me for that company. And so I'll say company one, say okay. And what that'll do is it'll run it for company one. And if I would change this to be company two and execute that, you'll run it for company two. So just returning uh, a bunch of the data. So we have our procedure in place. Now, if I go over to SQL reporting services to use this in a report, it's probably gonna give me an error and it probably would give you an error too. And the reason for that is I created this procedure as an administrator. And so I wanna make sure that I give permission to that procedure to whatever user ID I'm using to, to actually connect to the database to write reports. So I'm showing you this because this is a common error. I see people create a procedure and then they forget to grant access to their reporting users. Um, so how you do that is if you just right click on the procedure and do properties, you can go to permissions. And then in this area, I can say search and I, my user ID I use is DBG. And I'm just gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna say grant execute permission to that. I don't wanna give users the ability to alter or control or do any of these things. I just wanna give them the permission to execute that procedure. And I can say, okay. That's my reporting user. So it now has permission to execute this process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop on over here to SQL reporting services next. So we have our procedure out there to do account unit lists. Now I wanna create a report that uses it. So what you do is you do new report and just like what we've always done, I'm gonna use report builder. Now you can do this for, through Visual Studio or whatever your report writing tool of choice is, but uh, I'm gonna base this on a table or a matrix wizard. I'm gonna create a data set. And that data set is going to be on my financial database, which is that database I, I did that in. And so if I do next, it's then going to show me my normal list of tables and views. And in this case, I see stored procedures here. I'm going to go down to my stored procedure that I just did, which was account unit list. And if I check that, you'll notice it gives me my list of fields and it automatically populates the parameter for me. So normally we've created reports in the past sessions where I've selected fields and um, you know did the uh, parameters and all of that, had to do that. With a stored procedure, you just pick the procedure, it gives you the fields and it gives you the parameters. Now when I do next, I can do all my normal uh, report layout items. And then if I do next, We'll just walk through the wizard and say finish. So once you get to the last step, just like you're used to seeing, it gives you uh, kind of this last piece. It's got my parameter up here. If I run this, it's going to, I said default for null, so that's why it's giving me nothing. But if I uncheck that and put in my company one, in this case, I'll say view report, it passes the parameter to the stored procedure. If I put in two, run this report, it passes two to the stored procedure. That's all there is to creating a report on a stored procedure. First step, create a stored procedure. And the key two things there that I wanna emphasize, just make sure the last step of the stored procedure is returning a record set via a select statement. And then the second thing is, make sure that you grant permissions to the users. What, I, what happens if you don't grant permissions depending on their user ID that they have and their permissions, they may see it in the list still, but the minute they pick it, they're gonna get some weird errors. It's not necessarily a real descriptive error that you don't have permissions. Um, so just if you do grab a procedure and you select it, you get an error, the first thing I would check is permissions on that. So that's really all there is to creating uh, a report on a stored procedure. Hopefully you got something uh, good from today's session. And just like always, if you do have any suggestions, 
make sure you email those to info at dashboardgear.com. Uh, we're always looking for topics that will help you out in your reporting endeavors. Thank you all and uh, looking forward to talking with you again next week.